Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be starting episode 21 of our Catacomb series, where we try to take you on some deep dive tutorials with specific D2R edits. And today's topic is going to be all about editing uh, character breakpoints, as well as monster animation sequences and things like that. Um, so as usual, if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, make sure you like and subscribe, helps everybody out. And be sure to check out the video description below for important links to our website, Discord, Patreon, and other modding tools that you might need. Um, with all that out of the way, the example that we're going to be tackling today um, is going to be making the triangles transformation uh, from completing the set bonus match your necromancer uh, casting animation speed. Um, so just in case you're not familiar with the issue, um, is that uh, while you're in the triangle state, you cast much slower than while you're just in your normal necromancer state. Um, so I have a little test set up here where we can see where I have the transformation, uh, the set completion uh, on swap and the only cast speed that's currently on the character is coming from the gloves and it's this plus 20 percent from the tringles uh, gloves um, so you can see that that's not changing um, but just again to make sense of the issue we're going to just cast fireball a little bit spam that and just take note of the timing the cast speed and then we're going to switch and you can see it's noticeably slower while you're in that transform state, uh, even though your cast speed and nothing else has changed. Um, so we're going to go ahead and show you how you can fix stuff like this, uh, and also just kind of adjust things uh, more to your preference if you're talking breakpoints and things. Um, so with that understood for our goal, um, as usual, we're going to start out in Data Global Excel by pulling out the text files we need to edit as well as reference. Um, so to kind of explain um, where we need to start this investigation to you know complete the edit we want um, we need to first you know just kind of isolate uh, you know really what the the base problem is um, so we know that uh, it only happens while we're in this gal state and we know that gal state uh, you know the vampire gal um, only appears when the triangle set is completed um, so basically we want to start our investigation in sets.txt and find out what exactly is going on with that triangle set that might cause that um, so we're going to go ahead and lock everything up find our triangles entry and then we're going to go ahead and uh, scroll over we can see all the skills and stats it's using nothing kind of fishy there uh, we're going to scroll into the section that it gets for its completion bonus again we see mostly stats and stuff until we see this entry for a state. Um, so we can see that when this set is completed, it's applying a special state called monster set. Um, now we're going to uh, edit this state file, but just to again continue this investigation process, let's go ahead and pull out states.txt and let's see exactly what is being edited there. So let's just pull that out and we're going to do a search for that monster set and see what exactly this state is doing. So once more, we'll lock things up. We'll scroll to the right, look for anything out of the ordinary. And essentially, we can keep scrolling almost to the end until we get to the graphics type and graphics class column. Uh, as you might notice, not a lot of the other states use this. Um, so this is a somewhat unique entry um, you know, to look at. Um, so to make sense of exactly what these columns are doing, we're just going to go ahead and pull up our handy dandy Blizzard data guide. We're going to do a quick search for graphics type. And we can see here that it controls how to handle the unit graphics transformation based on the unit type. So if that value equals one, it's going to place it as a monster type graphics transformation. If it equals two, it's going to use it as a player type transformation. So obviously we could tell that it was using a value of one, so it's going to change it to use a monster. But to find out exactly what uh, graphics class 135 means, we're going to read up on that. And we can see that if graphics type equals one, then this field uses is the HCI deck hcidx field or basically just the monster id from the monstats.txt file so that's what we needed to know it's essentially uh, assigning that transformation based on um, whatever monster is in id 135 so we can go ahead and close this for now we don't need to edit it right away um, we're going to go ahead and pull out monstats.txt now um, so that we can uh, make sense of that so we're going to go ahead and once more just edit that actually uh, just to have less windows i'm going to go ahead and just drag it into the same window sorry about that okay so we're going to go ahead and search for id 135 
And we can see here that for ID 135, it matches the Vampire 5 entry. So now we finally know that uh, when that set is completed, a special state is applied. That state changes your visual transformation into that of the Vampire 5 monster. Um, and this obviously controls your animation uh, and breakpoints as well as visuals uh, as we uh, you know, verified with the Fireball example. So what we really need to do um, is essentially change change the animation sequence uh, that is being used um, so that we can make it match our necromancer. And you may be asking yourself, what the hell is an animation sequence? Um, so to explain that, made this little like just kind of cheat sheet breakdown for you. Um, this will make sense in just a minute when we get to opening one of the files. But just know that an animation sequence is a sequence of seven characters. Um, they can be numbers or letters uh, for the first part of the sequence. Um, actually, for the, the first four characters. Uh, again, it'll make sense in just a minute, but just know that they're all seven characters and they're broken up kind of like this. Um, so before I uh, confuse you any further, let's just go ahead and open that file and uh, explain how this relates to Monstacts and uh, exactly what we need to do next. Um, so again, we're controlling animation sequences. You may have never uh, edited this file before, but the file that controls all this for us is going to be animdata.d2 in your uh, global folder. Um, this file is compiled, so you normally can't edit it, but there is a special program that is linked in the video description as well as our Discord uh, that will help you accomplish that. Um, that program is called Anim Data Editor, so I'm going to assume you've downloaded that from the links I just mentioned. And once you do, you're just going to see a single folder with a couple files inside, which is the entire program. So you're just going to extract that single folder wherever you'd like, you know, your desktop, something like that. Um, I've already done that here and placed it on my desktop and once we've done that we can take this animdata.d2 file from our cask and we can just drag it in with the rest of the files. Um, once that file is in place, we're going to go ahead and run extract.bat. You might see a quick uh, command prompt pop-up window, but all essentially we need to do is just make sure it created that text file for us. Um, so now that we have that text file, we have something we can edit. So we're going to go ahead and just pop that into our sheet editor and we're going to get this going. Um, so the first thing I'd like to say is don't be too discouraged by uh, what looks like all the gibberish in the first column and all the rows and numbers and stuff in the others. Um, the actual edits we need to do are going to be pretty simple, um, but we will break down exactly how this first column works and uh, what's going on here. So this first column is going to be the actual animation sequences. Uh, so for every monster and player in the game, uh, this helps identify um, basically the animation timings, um, your different breakpoints, things like that, um, for all your modes, uh, so whether you're attacking, using a skill, in neutral, uh, etc., um, as well as all the different weapon types, uh, so whether you're using a sword, a bow, um, you know, a staff, all that kind of stuff. Um, so to make sense of that, now that we just kind of understand that these are the actual sequences, again, they follow this pattern, we're going to now fill out each one of these three sections, um, and then it'll all kind of come together and make sense to you. So the first thing we need to do is find out the monster token, which is the first two characters of the sequence. For that, we're going to hop over to Monstats. We're going to take a look at our Vampire 5 entry. I'm going to go ahead and lock these rows up real quick. And we can see that for the code column, this is our first token. Uh, it uses capital V, capital A uh, for its token. So we're going to go ahead and enter that in. Um, it is important that it is uh, capital um, because that is different um, than a uh, standard uh, then, then lowercase, they, they are separate. So a lowercase VA would be a different uh, token. Uh, so anyways, we just want to remember that uh, the vampire is currently using the VA token. For the animation mode, uh, this is the type of uh, basically a attack or um, animation it's using. So um, to make sense of that, we're going to go back to the Blizzard data guide. We're just going to do a quick search for like A1, and it should take us to our mode table breakdown. Um, and these are, again, the different modes that you're going to enter as you're performing different actions. So if you're performing skill one as a monster or something, you're going to use the S1 animation mode. But if you're using attack one, then you're going to use the A1 animation mode. Um, so for our particular case, we were casting fireball, obviously. 
Um, so that's going to be a casting uh, animation mode. And for that, it uses a token of SC. So we've now filled in our second two uh, characters for our sequence. And finally, we need to find out the weapon class that we care about. Um, so for that, we're going to hop back to Monstats real quick, just to see what entry the uh, Vampire 5 uses for its Monstats 2 uh, entry. And that is going to be, if we look in the Monstats EX column, it also uses Vampire 5 as the entry for that. So just for reference, we're going to go ahead and pop up Monstats2.txt. We'll do a quick search for Vampire 5. I'll go ahead and expand these and lock everything up. Um, so we can see here that for the Vampire 5 entry, if we go to the base W column, which is the base weapon class they're just kind of assigned, um, we can see it uses the entry HTH. Um, HTH stands for hand-to-hand, -hand, but once more we can hop in the data guide and we can look at the table breakdown and we can verify that again HTH equals hand-to-hand. -hand. Obviously if you're using a bow, a staff, a one-hand sword, etc., um, you'd have different animation modes to uh, possibly consider. Um, so anyways, uh, we've now completed our animation sequence puzzle, if you will, um, and we now have our seven character uh, sequence that we can now search in that anim data for. Um, again, this is the sequence that it uses for the vampire monster while casting using a hand-to-hand -hand weapon. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into anim data, and let's just do a quick search for that entry. And now we can see that entry here listed. And once more, these are all the values that control the actual uh, animation speed and breakdown. Um, to compare this real quick against the Necromancer, now that we know how the sequence works, if we wanna look at something else, we can just change the first two characters. So let's take a look at our Necromancer, which is gonna be token NE for Necromancer. And let's go ahead and do a search for this. And we can see here that here's our Necromancer entry. And uh, I didn't do a good job of uh, pointing it out, um, but we can see here that the values in the first two columns, um, which are the ones we kind of care about in this video, are very different than the vampire entry. So we can see we're using a frames per direction of 16 with an animation speed of 256 for the Necromancer. But once more, if we go back to the vampire, we can see that those values are 15 and 160, respectively, instead. Um, so just a quick side note, side tangent, to explain how that works. Uh, here's a little speed calculator. Um, I'll go ahead and include this in the video description as well. Um, this is just used to help give you an understanding of how this works, not necessarily to replace any current calculator that's out there. Um, so we can see here it's a pretty complicated formula overall, um, but all we really care about is the values from our anim data file. So that's going to be your FPD or that frames per direction, as well as your AS or that animation speed. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in those values for Necromancer that we first saw. And again, that was 16 and 256. And we can see that that results in about 13 frames every attack uh, with you know 1.92 attacks per second now if I swap those out for the vampire entries which again were 15 and 160 we can see that now my frames per attack are 20 and I'm only uh, attacking at 1.25 uh, attacks a second um, so obviously a big noticeable difference there and as you start uh, increasing your uh, you know a cast speed, attack speed, all that kind of stuff. Obviously that problem just kind of gets a little worse on you. Um, so uh, now that we understand basically what controls that, obviously what we need to do to fix it is just make those values match. So you technically could just go ahead and swap those out right here. Um, and now the vampire is going to use the same cast speed uh, as your... Um, you know, Necromancer, uh, but that's also going to change it for the base enemy. Uh, so now the just normal vampires that you'll encounter in the world will also have this faster cast speed. Uh, and that may not be what you want. You may want to keep the original the same, but only while you're in that transform state, you know, have it the same as Necromancer. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and put everything back to how it was, and we're going to go ahead and clone and make our own animation sequence so that we can control that how we'd like. So to get that done, um, we're going to go ahead and hop back over to Monstats, um, and we're going to close this one. This is our Monstats 2 we're not uh, using anymore, uh, just reference. And we're going to go ahead and clone this Vampire 5 entry. And the reason we want to do that is so that we can give it a new token. 
So once we've cloned it, we can go ahead and uh, rename it to whatever we want. We're going to go ahead and just name it Vampire Train to help us remember. We'll update the ID just for our own benefit. And then we're going to remove the next in class because this is just used as a visual, not like an actual new monster. Um, the important thing that we care about is this code entry like before. Instead of using VA, we want to give it a new uh, token so that we can make a new sequence for it. Um, all we really care about it that is that it's unused, uh, so use whatever strikes your fancy. But as you can see from looking at uh, some of the other tokens that are used, it can be both uppercase and lowercase as well as numbers. Uh, and again, they are different uh, lowercase versus uppercase, so just keep that in mind. So we're going to use uh, uppercase Z and then the number 4. Uh, that should be unused, so that should be fine. And that's all we need to do for this edit. We're going to go ahead and save that. Uh, now we need to assign uh, this monster to a st that state um, so that we can change what monster it's using. Again, this will make it so that it uses our custom monster uh, for the triangle's transformation, but it's going to leave the original monster untouched. Uh, but to do that, we're going to change that 135 to 742, because uh, once more, that's the ID of our kind of new clone. Um, so we're just going to update that and hit save. So uh, our states.txt and our monstats.txt, those edits are done. Uh, you can feel free to close that file if you wish. Um, our final edits are going to be done in anumdata.txt, and the process is actually going to be pretty simple. Um, so we're just going to do uh, once more a search for the necromancer version of the cast animation so we can get the values we need, and we're just going to go ahead and clone this row. And once we've cloned it, all we need to do is update the token. Um, so again, we use that token Z4 for our monster. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that in there. And again, now we're telling it, uh, you know, for the monster that uses the token Z4, for its cast animation with the hand-to-hand -hand weapon type, use these values, which are the same values from our Necromancer. So now our cast speed should match. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and our animdata.txt file is done. Um, but remember this anim data text file is just a little special. Um, now that we've uh, kind of saved it and you know completed it, now we need to recompile it into something uh, the game will use. So uh, just to show what it's doing, I'm going to go ahead and delete the original. Uh, you don't need to. Again, this is just for demo. And we're going to run the pack.bat this time instead of extract. And then we can see it's going to take that text file and turn it back into the .d2 file that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that. And just like we got it from uh, the cask where it was in our global folder, we're just going to put it directly in our global folder in our mod as well. So let's go ahead and um, add that in there. And now we've completed our edit. So um, everything is technically working, but because we made a new monster, uh, we just want to quickly add a visual so that... Uh, you know, everything looks correct. Uh, so for that, we're just going to go to data, HD, character, and uh, we're going to pull out the monsters.json file, and we're just going to add our new entry real quick. So we'll just go ahead and do a search for vampire, and we can see normally vampire5 uses the vampire1.json. Uh, we can just go and add it right after, that's fine. Again, our monster was called vampire train, and we'll just also have it use the vampire1 entry. Uh, we're not creating a new json or visual or anything so that's all we need to do again we're just kind of assigning a visual uh linking everything together um so now that we've done all that if you guys are still with me uh we can go ahead and launch the mod and we can check that our changes uh are correctly working now So once more, what we should see is now that when we transform, um, that we shouldn't lose cast speed. It should have the same as the Necromancer. So we're going to go ahead and spam away some fireball, transform, and we can see that now they have the same cast speed. So because we added the animation sequence and gave it a new one, the original vampires will still have the old slow speed, but while you're transformed and trang, it's going to match your Necromancer like it probably should have. Um, so this can be one example of how you can use this. If you want to use this to adjust breakpoints more to your liking, um, or like we did, add entirely new animation sequences to finer control things, maybe for mercenaries, etc., um, then you can feel free to do all that. Um, so I hope this has been a helpful video in explaining and diving into the, the deep woods of uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected modding. Uh, thanks for sticking around to the end, and have a great day. Bye.